and welcome to the study this morning. Uh, we're going to continue our study on uh, Deborah and Brack, uh, but before we begin, can we have a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for all your blessings, for the time we have this morning, and we invite your Holy Spirit to guide and direct in this study. We need your presence in our lives. We need you uh, to teach us and to guide us. Um, we pray for those around us that your Holy Spirit can speak to them as well and that your angels can go before us and watch over each one. And we pray for this study uh, that we can have clear minds, a clear understanding, and that we can um, resolve some of the issues that have arisen in this study Help us to correct any errors. Uh, be with each person in their personal lives and us in, with us in this study now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Um, so we were yesterday uh, picking, picking our way through this story of Deborah and Barak. Um, and uh, we were spending a bit of time de dealing with uh, JL and the death of Sisera. Um, we were just trying to see if the, how we could look at these different events and how we could line them up as the various waymarks. Now, I want to address um, a couple of things. Um, so the first... Uh, has to do with this chart that I showed you before. Now, this, this is a chart dealing with September 23rd, 2017 uh, to November 9th, 2019. And um, uh, this is wrong. This is, I'm just going to correct this mistake. Okay. <clears throat> so one of the things that, one of the way marks that we have addressed is October 13th, 2018. And we know that's 126 days between June 9th, 2018, and October 13th, 2018. So you can see it down here. The 329 days are those two noons, one at Lambert, one at Warburg. Jeff is presenting at Lambert. So Jeff is doing his last presentation at Lambert Church. And... Um, uh, but I'm at noon at, at Warburg and noon at Lambert because I'm watching Jeff live on my iPhone and doing a calculation. So I'm calculating the fact that there's 63 days to November 9th and that September 7th, 9-7 is, 9 times 7 is 63. I'm also noting that between uh, October 13th and September 17th is this March 27th, 2019 date and that creates March 27th as a mirror. So, so that's part of it. Also, the 126 days, this Jeff is going to notice later. So he's going to notice this after January 11th, 2020. He's going to notice that this 126 days is mirrored by uh, this 126 days. He's also going to note these 63 weeks going to March 27th, 2021 which is 441 days. And we also have in the dates that are used here uh, that um, whether we use the American or the European or Canadian way of counting dates, they add up uh, to this date if we use the European and this date if we use the American. So I'm not gonna go into that in detail. Uh, what I want to point out, though, is that we have this line and we are using some way marks in this line. And um, so we are actually addressing this whole line. We're marking from September 27th, 2017 to November 9th, 2019. This is the line of the, the reform line of um, uh, Deborah and Barack. So that's how, how we're looking at that. We're looking at the period of darkness preceding it. And so September 23rd, 2017 is the time of the end in the way that we've structured our line. So 
so the the dates that we have here the different dates june 9th 2018 october 13th 2018 september 7th 2019 march 27th 2019 um all of those dates are dates that uh could be events in our line now the one date that uh is rather interesting that's not on this chart is what is the date between June 9th, 2018 and October 13th, 2018? Does anybody remember? So remember this 126 days uh, was counted ordinarily from June 10th to October 13th by Daniel from Brazil. And, um, and he had discovered this on July 27th, 2018, and wrote about it and you know took a screenshot of what he had predicted on that on that date. What's the date that's in the center of this? Is that uh, August 11th? Yeah, it's August 11th, right? Now, when we look at Samuel Snow's letters, which I guess I could do, um, see if I can find this anywhere. No. Um, Okay, I'll get there. And August 11th and August 11th. It's going to be in Samuel Snow's letters in this section somewhere here. So what you're seeing here um, is this June 9th to October 13th. And this is not the best one. Where's the best one? It's not bad, but it's not the one I want either. I have a lot of junk stuff here that I can get rid of. Most of one that's the template. Well, this one's good. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see here is October 13th in the center. Well, not quite the center, but this is from where I'm going to count the 391 and a half days to midnight November 9th, 2019. This is noon October 13th. Um, we have here the 126 days from June 9th, 9:11 p.m. That's sunset. So it's commencing June 10th, but it's we're marking June 9th. And then uh, we have this ordinal count to 126 days. Um, now, I had counted 120 days uh, because I was taking the 120 years of the kings of the United Kingdom, Saul, David, and Solomon. And then I was counting the 391 and a half years uh, to the destruction of Jerusalem, to the end of Zedekiah's reign. And uh, this, of course, would line up with um, uh, the prophecy of Josiah, or at least the dividing of the kingdom. And then I noticed that there was 63 days on either side of this 126, where August 11th is the center. And I just don't know. I don't. Ah, oh, maybe this is it. Ah, here it is. Samuel Snow's letters template. So. So if you can see here, this is that diagram that I had above, this one in the middle. And um, uh, so August 11th is the center of the 126 days. Now, the prediction is made on July 27th. You can see the 120 days and the six days difference here. And then you can see, um, because there's 13 days between the Julian and Gregorian calendar, I put August 11th Julian here. So when you look at Samuel Snow's letters above, you see February 6th, 16th. That's going to line up with June 9th. 
six days later, is this June 15th date from which I counted. And um, you can see that's going to line up with the publication of Snow's letter on February 22nd. And then the July 27th prediction is going to be 16 days before April 19th, uh, before August 11th, and just as April 3rd, when he republishes his letter, it's 16 days before April 19th, April 3rd to April 19th, July 27th to August 11th is going to be 16 days. Now, somebody looking at that would see that it's actually only 15 days. So you go 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then you add the 11, it's only 15, but I'm counting this one ordinarily. So that's the only difference there. And then there's 13 days from April 19th to May 2nd. And I have the 13 days between the Julian and Gregorian date. <clears throat> so this structure here, even before we had fleshed it out completely, the fact that it lined up with Snow's letters um, in this way, that is we take June 22nd, and we line it up with October 13th. And if we count 391.5, we come to July 18. So this same idea here. There's a bunch of extraneous stuff here that I could get rid of. But um, that's basically the idea that we have here, that Snow's letters line up with this history. And this history is going to be fundamental in our understanding of the line below us. Now, in this line, we have midnight... You can see there, midnight, November 9th. But the way we mark here, October 13th, we're counting as midnight. And then we would look at November 9th as the midnight cry. That's originally how it was presented uh, by Tess. Um, well, not completely, but this was presented as the midnight cry. And, or, or as... Let me think. I'm trying to see. Maybe I got that wrong. We, we actually presented this as the midnight cry. So I can't remember. This would be the closed door. I think that's how it was originally done. And we kept moving things around because we had these different way marks of what is midnight and what is the midnight cry. And, and it seemed pretty obvious that we were dealing with different lines. Now, the way that it was trying to be addressed uh, based upon Parminder's models of these staggered uh, lines. Um, this was the midnight cry for the priests, and this would be um, either midnight or the midnight cry for the Levites. So it was unclear how we were going to understand that. But what we have never done with this really is figure out which line this is the midnight cry in. So, so we're taking this as the midnight cry, but we, but we didn't really have a line in which we did that. Now, um, so when we go to this line that we have been constructing, now I've put the midnight cry September 7th, 2019. So, so I'm not putting October 13th as a midnight cry, but it's going to occur in one of these three question mark lines. Now, the thing about August 11th, 2018, we put it here on this line already. But what were we marking here as August 11th, 2018? What event were we marking, if you remember from yesterday, the scattered study of yesterday? Anybody remember what we were marking? I see Angela's, looks like maybe she's oh, trying sorry. to. No, I wasn't trying to, I'm scratching my brain. I don't remember at all. Sorry. Okay. I think I logged on late too. Okay. So this is, this is in Alberta. It's, it's actually at Pigeon Lake. Um, it's at, I um, can't remember the name of the building, but um, um, it's a United Church camp that I used to go to when I was a kid. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it was the date that Jeff, um, is going to, um, he's, he's presenting Samuel Snow's letters 
And in connection with that, he's going to be inviting me to go to um, Arkansas, right? Now, so because I'm going to go to Arkansas, I'm going to end up doing some presentations there. But initially, that's not why he's asking me to go there. He's asking me to help Brian, a friend of ours. So, um, so, so this August 11th date is um, there's also I'm doing a presentation at these camp meetings. I'm doing presentations dealing with Samuel Snow's letters. And I'm going to be addressing the week of Christ study. So, so I, I don't remember exactly what I presented on that specific date. But this study, the week of Christ, is going to be... Um, this, this whole study is going to make a prediction regarding uh, 2019. So it's going to be about the betrayal uh, that's going to happen. Um, so we have to sort out kind of what this line is. But the fact that it also happens to be the center of the 126 days, I think, is significant. Right. So, so when I put it there, that's the Sabbath. Um, I wasn't really thinking about August 11th, 2018 as being the center of the 126 days from Samuel Snow's letters. Now, if, if we look at um, Samuel Snow's letters, the center date that's marked there in that 126 days was April 19th. So remember, he had a chiasm where May, May 2nd was the center. That's the chiasm that we discovered here when we were studying in Alberta, our, our study group on Friday nights back in 2017. It's actually in 2016. I think we figured it out. It might have been early 2017 or late 2016. But when we recognized that there was this, uh, yeah, actually it might have been 2017, come to think of it. Yeah, it's later in 2017 that we see the center of this chiasm. That's going to be later. Okay. So, um So the fact that we have this August 11th date, which lines up in Samuel Snow's letters with April 19th as the center of this chiasm, what would be the significance that Jeff is presenting Samuel Snow's letters on August 11th, 2018, um, in connection with this time setting, right? So he's addressing the issue of time setting. Uh, but he's also addressing Samuel Snow's letters. So what would be the significance of this last day of the camp meeting? And that being the center of the 126 days. So I know it takes a little bit of thinking. Is there any significance in this? Well, there must be because it would take us back 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 to Mitch's prophecy, but and then I uh, I guess you came came to Christ on that date. Uh, when was that? Nineteen eighty. Thirty eight years before. Nineteen eighty. So yeah, thirty eight years before. Yeah, thirty eight years. Uh, two metonic cycles previous to that. So there, there's lots of significance, but the idea here, though, that this is connected with Samuel Snow's letters, it is connected with the prediction that is being made, which we don't know about at this point, by Daniel from Brazil. So he's going to make that pre prediction on July 27th, right? Because that camp meeting will have ended on, you know, well, it's going to be, he's going to count from June 10th, an ordinal count, and come to this October 13th date. So we can see that this, this date here is, is really significant. Now, we put it as a formalization of a message. And that message, of course, relates to July 18th, uh, because that's what September 23rd, 2017 is about. We're going to talk about the July 18 
date in Samuel Snow, Snow's letters as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And so this 777 days here, um, I don't think we can just dismiss. We never really have examined the significance of it and the events in it. We've never dealt with it as a line. We just simply had that 777 days and the failed prediction of the Revelation 12 sign prophecy by the evangelicals. And so it became part of this structure of, of our lines, but you know we've never looked at these internal dates here. So, so I think it's pretty significant in that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using um, Samuel Snow's, uh, you know, Samuel Snow's letters to make the July 18, 2020 prediction. And, and it's going to be based partly upon the 391.5 days. Now, in here then, I mean, even before we get into understanding the symbolism here, I mean, we know we have some significant dates um, we have uh, that have to be in here. October 13th has to be in this line, right? So, so we know that's going to occur in the line. Um, now, as far as, um, so that would be the arrival of this second angel, which is really what we were talking about when it came to um, you know, this, you know, this midnight cry message, right? So the midnight cry um, message is going to be related to October 13th, midnight cry, 391 and a half days. And, you know, so we're going to put that date either as the empowerment of the first angel or the arrival of the second. Um, we might even argue that it's the formalization of the second angel, which would be midnight. So, so it has to be one of those, and, and I'm not really certain which. So what a person would need to know is what other significant dates are there. Um, so prior to October 13th, we do have Tess's presentation now her presentation is 10 days and the midnight cry or 10 years part of me and it's going to be 10 days before i give the midnight cry so to speak i guess it's daniel from brazil giving it um on october 13th at noon at lambert um now we also have another date the date between september 7th and 20 and to september 7th 2019 and October 13th, and that would be the May 27th, 2019 date, though we don't have an event on that date that I know of. I don't know of anything of particular importance other than um, uh, we have we have messages, uh, a message before the camp meeting in 2019. Uh, that's going to be Jeff's study um, that he gives, um, which was, I think it's 1963, is the title of the study. So this is going to be uh, before the camp meeting where he patches, passes the torch to Parminder. Um, so there's going to be a meeting on the 27th, and I think that one was 1963, and then there's one meeting the day after on the 28th. And then, of course, they don't have meetings till the camp meeting starts again. And during that camp meeting, he's going to be Elijah passing the cloak to Elisha is the idea. So, I mean, we could put the March 27th uh, as a formalization of the message. Now, um, based on his message, so I'm just going to look it up here because... Uh, don't remember now uh, what it was. Maybe somebody else could do that too. I know Rand's pretty quick at doing that. Uh, 178 years to the day from 
811-1840 to 811-2018. Okay, so that, that's significant. Significant. Um, so it would be actually the School of the Prophets. Okay, so Ah, that's what it is. It's the shut door. So 1863 is going to be the presentation on the 28th. Um, so the one presented on uh, March 27th, 2019 is the shut door. So we would have to see if that has anything to do with <laughs> the symbols in these lines. I I'm just going to put it there, though. Because um, remember, this is just all of this is tentative. We haven't decided on anything. So that's going to be the center. So if that is the case, we would know, most likely put October 13 here. And then we would put October 3rd. And I put 2019 as 2018. Okay. So if we look at these lines, uh, does this seem reasonable based upon the events that occur in this line that we, we do this? It looks as if all the way marks are there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we don't have in this line. So, I mean, and I put August 11th, 2018 as uh, this formalization. I mean, we could get rid of October 3rd and, you know, move June 9th over here. So, so this, this, um, so if we did this, I think this makes more sense. So what you end up having is these 63 days, these 63 days. Um, this is going to be the 391 and, and a half all the way over here. This is going to be the 329 with this one as the center. Um, now, outside of this, of course, is that other 63 days. But that is going to be much more connected to the next 777 days. Is that making sense to people? So... So, I mean, this is a nice structure, whether it's it's really going to bear out when we look at um, the, the symbols that are in the story, right? So this is kind of a backwards way of doing it, but I, I don't, I, I didn't know how to do it otherwise. I thought it'd be easier having these, these lines here first. Whoops, I put that in the wrong spot. This goes here. And, and then you're going to have another line. This is going to be 329 with 164.5 on either side. Because these are both noon. This is going to be midnight commencing March 27th. Um, 
but this actually looks pretty good in connection with what is being predicted and, and what this 777 days address. They address this darkness that has to do with Parminder's message, um, which to a large degree has to do with uh, him wanting to take over um, FFA, um, that his subtle teachings uh, regarding the nature of Christ, which he do, tries to do through the nature of man, um, his belief about um, liberal ideas, and also his use and manipulation of the people through the time-setting message and his revival of his prediction, uh, his method of understanding things, uh, dealing with the 126 and the 151 going from uh, 1863 and uh, 1888. Um, so he's going to use this prediction uh, to give 2014, right? So 2014 is going to be the state that the Sunday law is going to come after it fails, of course. Um, he becomes basically uh, the leader in Europe. He's in charge of organization. He's the elder for Europe anyway. And um, uh, so, so this September 23rd study and how it connects and basically it undermines what Parminder is planning to do. And we can see how dates here in this are connected with um, specifically uh, this prediction um, and, uh, and ultimately hit the close of probation, which comes about for those who uh, accept Parminder's message. Their probation closes on November 9th. So, I mean, as far as the structure, I mean, if even if we weren't looking at the story of judges and we weren't looking at um, here, Deborah and Barack, we, we could still create this line uh, quite readily. I mean, in a sense, it's already created for us. We, we have the 777 days and the all of these dates we have already marked in connection with this line. So there's nothing new here. Uh, the only thing is we now have a significance for August 11th, uh, which has to do with Samuel Snow's letters and um, and also an invitation to go to um, Arkansas, which is of course gonna be instrumental. If I'm not in Arkansas, I'm not there doing the measurement on October 13th. Uh, you know, it, it wouldn't have the same meaning if I was doing it somewhere else. And I don't know if, if I hadn't gone to Arkansas, I don't know what would have happened, but those are ifs. So I think this line looks fine. So what we have to do now is look at the verses and try to understand the events that we can put underneath here. Now, the first one dealing with this invitation. Um, right. So this is an invitation that Deborah makes to Barack. Right. So I'm going there right now. So just. So we know we have this this period of time. They're being persecuted for 20 years. Right. And um, we can connect this to. Uh, um, well, we connect it to 9-11. Uh, So there's, there's ways we do this. So I'm not going to go and look at that chronology again. But but what we have is we have this, this invitation that's made to Barack. And, um, of course, Deborah represents a church or a movement. We say it represents this movement. And it's an invitation for a message. And so... This is going to be this chronology that for the first time is invited to teach at the School of the Prophets, right? So this chronology is going to be presented, this structure of prophetic chronology, even though I had presented in 2014 and I was there as a student in 2016 and did presentations in 2016 on uh, the book of Ezekiel. Uh, in 2017, I'm invited as a teacher at the school. Though 
not really sure of, um, you know, there I present, um, you know, my understanding of the structure of prophetic chronology uh, and, um, you know, Parminder ends up there. So there's a bunch of things that happen. But we're going to say that that's connected, even though I'm not invited on September 23rd, so to speak. I'm invited before that, and I speak in September. It's going to be, it's going to culminate in this presentation at Lambert Church, dealing with the prediction before midnight being July 18th. But there is this relux reluctance on my part to move without the movement, right? So I want the movement to go with me. So that's the one thing which few people can understand except for me and how reluctant I was to just, because uh, I believed in the movement and I still do, um, that God is leading the movement, not individual people. So to me, anything that I was presenting, it needed to be accepted by the movement and it wasn't going to be done through subterfuge. It was going to be done in the open, clearly presented so people could make decisions. That's the way that, I believe that we should operate as Christians. So this invitation here, I'm going to mark that with the September 23, 2017 date. Now, we know that the symbols of Deborah, she's a bee. That's Bumblebee Road, right? Uh, the palm tree represents Jericho. So that's the 2520. Uh, this is between Rama, uh, Rachel weeping for her children, and Bethel. Um, in the Mount of Ephraim, so Bethel's uh, the house of God. So what's the significance of between Rama and Bethel? So we got between, between means something. Does, does between suggest a chiasm? It can. Midway. Yeah, midway, right? And so Rama and Bethel, Rama we're taking as Rachel weeping for her children. That we're just using that as the main symbol that we would have. And Bethel being the house of God. So this is where the ministry, the school of the prophets, however you want to look at it, uh, dwells. And it's connected to the 2520 under the palm tree. And, and of course, all around the School of the Prophets, you have the charts uh, in all the rooms, right? And Rama is where the School of the Prophets was, wasn't it, by Samuel? Okay. Um, I don't know. He set up. He set up. He set up the school there, okay. as well as Gilgal, and I think, uh, yeah, Sherry could maybe, I can't remember, there's other places he had schools with prophets. Okay, so that would be significance too in connecting this with the school of the prophets. So, I mean, maybe somebody could say that's the primary reference. But I also think that there is this connection between this idea of uh, Rachel weeping for her children um, and and the symbol of the house of God in the Mount of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So, so this has to do with the leadership that happens under Jeff with the FFA and the School of the Prophets. Okay, but is there anything significant about the fact that Deborah was the wife of Lapidoth. Okay, so so we we took a look at Lapidoth, and um, that had to do with torches, right? I mean, so torches might connect us to the story of Gideon. But in the Hebrew, is this also not, is this name not a feminine plural? Um, yes. So it's a, it's a feminine plural, um, but it's, it's been masculinized for some reason. Lapidos. Right. So it is a feminine plural. 
Um, and so that might suggest what? Well, feminine, of course, related more to a church. And as we've been looking at this, that this would be a, a light of some type, such as a such as a torch, right? Yeah. Yeah, though I think it, it could also refer to the dependence on the spirit of prophecy. I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's kind of intriguing because there's only one article really that that Mrs. White wrote about this. And we would find that in Signs of the Times of the 16th of June of 1881. Okay. Now, what we're dealing with here, especially when we're dealing with Jabin, is we're dealing with the second Jabin. The first being the, the first Jabin king of Hazor was destroyed in the days of Joshua. And the second came to rebuild the city. Okay. So Jabin with the his name meaning would be either a discerner or the wise. But do we look at this as being ironic? Mm, I I haven't been. So. Because this, this Jabin is opposing the children of Israel. So is he of the wisdom of the apostates? Like the wisdom of the world or something. Right. I mean, the, the article itself in the first four paragraphs is pretty blunt. In the northern part of the land of Canaan, near Lake Maram, lay the possessions of Jabin, king of Hazor, and one of the most powerful and formidable of the enemies of Israel. In the, na in the days of Joshua, this monarch united with other kings against Israel, but was utterly defeated and his city was burned. After some years, however, the Canaanites recovered from their defeat and rebuilt the city. A new king, Jabin, reigning like his predecessor in Hazor, rose into great power. The commander of his armies, Sisera, was an able and successful general. His forces were well-equipped and powerful, including 900 chariots of iron. The Israelites, having again separated themselves from God by idolatry, were grievously oppressed by these enemies. The property and even the lives of the people were in constant danger. Hence, the villages and lonely dwellings were deserted and the people congregated in the walled cities. The high roads were unoccupied, and the people went from place to place by unfrequented byways. At the places for drawing water, many were robbed and even murdered. And to add to their distress, the Israelites were unarmed. Among 40,000 men, not a sword or a spear could be found. So if they have no sword, no spear, they are unable by the wisdom of man to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. For 20 years, the Israelites groaned under the yoke of the oppressor. Then they turned from their idolatry and with humiliation <clears throat> and repentance, cried unto the Lord for the deliverance. They did not cry in vain. There was dwelling in Israel a woman illustrious for her piety. Through her, the Lord chose to deliver his people. Her name was Deborah, 
she was known as a prophetess, and in the absence of the usual magistrates, the people had sought to her for counsel and justice. So we have this we have this issue of the people not repenting. And they then have to repent with great humiliation. What should that say to us today? Well, I think we should be doing the same thing ongoing. How else should we be approaching this? Well, in trying to understand this passage? Yeah. Oh. I mean, there's there's obviously, you know, all of these events and, and th this background of the story. Um, but I'm looking more at the symbols. Um, like we're not looking at this as a moral story. Right. It's it's relating to our time. Um, so, you know, Jabin, king of Canaan, is is um, evil. Right. I mean, he's the oppressor. It's the wisdom of the world. It's Parminder's um, Catholic. You know, he, he basically the Javen King of Canaan represents the principles of Catholicism, which are being expressed in the philosophy of Parminder. Right. So so this is the conflict that's going to happen is going to happen between this message of Parminder's and FFA. And Deborah definitely represents FFA. Now, the one thing about the word Lapidoth, I mean, I know there's no etymological connection between Lapidoth and butterflies. Um, but because of the bee there and that she's the wife of Lapidoth, and it's in this feminine form. Um, Lapidoth, well, I can't remember the exact pronunciation of, of the scientific name, but it's like lapis or something like that. And a lapidary is where um, you house butter, butterflies. Um, I just wonder if there's a connection there. Because what does a butterfly symbolize? <laughs> Generally, how do we use the butterfly as a symbol? Yeah, so death and resurrection, right? We've been through the wood. The iron is next. Okay. Okay. Anyway, she's going to judge Israel at that time. I'm not sure what Rosanna's message means. <laughs> um, now, she dwells under the palm tree. So we were talking about that. That has to do with these charts. And we can take all of this as representing the school of the prophets. Rama with the school of the prophets and Bethel being the house of God. And, you know, a person could even say this from the school of the prophets to um, Lambert church, if we wanted to. And, and who dwells between uh, the school of the prophets and Lambert church.
for people who've been down to Arkansas and have driven to both places. It's not that, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff lives between them, right? Um, and, and it's almost, I mean, it's pretty close to exactly midway. I mean, I don't know, driving, it's, it's similar uh, to midway. But, uh, but that would also apply here, right? So that's really where FFA is. FFA is between Lambert Church, Bethel, the house of God, and Rama, the school of the prophets. Does that seem reasonable? We're being too literal here. <clears throat> so I think that's that's actually pretty much exactly right. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's halfway between just basically in the center of those two. Even driving. So, um, okay. So now what are the symbols? This invitation comes, right, to Barak, and that's going to be the message of chronology. Uh, so Barak is... Um, a lightning or a light flash, but he's the son of pleasantness, right? Or the father of pleasantness, pardon me. Um, Abi means father, Noam means pleasant. Um, so he's the father of pleasantness. Delight, beauty, splendor, grace. And he's out of Kadesh Naphtali. Uh, the significance there is that Kadesh is like represents the holy place. Naphtali is, this is a city in Naphtali. Right, which is, means openings. Afutim. Okay. So, uh, and he's not going to want to go. So, uh, she, well, she says, hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, go draw toward Mount Tabor. Um, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. So we're saying that. This is 10,000 altogether based on other things that are said. Right. So how many exactly of Naphtali and how many exactly of Zebulun, whether it's even, doesn't say. So, But it's not going to be 20,000 altogether. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kaishan. So that river there means winding. Sisera. Uh, and Sisera means battle array, the captain of Jabin's, Jabin's army and his chariots and his multitude and will deliver them into thine hand. Right. Now we know they have 900 chariots. And what did we do with the 900? How, how are we going to take that symbol? How are we going to apply it? Anybody remember? Thirty times thirty. Now, of course, this is the message of of Parminder that has these nine hundred chariots. So how would how would we understand this in relationship to Parminder, Parminder's message? 
because this is the enemy that 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 we're opposing with this chronology. If we got more people here than yesterday morning, we should have more talking. Well, I know we were saying it's the length of one of our, our months, but I'm still thinking about the 30 times 30, 30 times 30 times 30 in the Book of Judges. Okay, is the length of what? Of our months, you know, the regular solar months, solar lunar months. Well, ours is 30.44. Or, or the prophetic months, I should but say. Prophetic, Sorry, the prophetic month is 30, yeah. Um, so 30 times 30 is 900. So it's, it's a doubling of months. Um, now we take, of course, chariots, you know, we know that has to do with Daniel 11 verse 40 to 45. I know the chariots are part of that message. Uh, but this this has to do with this enemy. So they have 900 chariots. So this has to do with Parminder. So Parminder has 900 chariots, or his message does. There might be something there that we don't notice at this time. Okay, so we need to get to um, the next. So the next way mark we have is this. June 9th, 2018 date. Now, now, we're saying that Deborah is calling a Barack, and that's going to be connected to September 23rd. But there seems to be this standing order, I guess, that Barack has. That is, where is Barack? So, so Deborah says to Barack, um, hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded thee? Now, where where does the Lord God of Israel command him? So, um, do we have that? In, in this passage being listed. So we don't have this this. We don't have the record of the Lord telling Barak to do this, do we? Uh, Barak would have to have the faith that God, God was speaking to him through Deborah. Well, yeah, but she seems to be reminding him hath not the lord god of israel commanded saying go draw toward mount tabor i mean is this just the first time barack hears of this or is deborah reminding him of something he, he's already been told do we have anything in the spirit of prophecy that tells us about this Okay, so what, what it says in, in the spirit of prophecy, um, I have trouble finding this here. Um, I think I just passed it. Okay, so this is from this is the, from the article that uh, Dwight read, Signs of the Times, June 16th, 1881. The Lord communicated to Deborah his purpose to destroy the enemies of Israel and bade 
for send a, for a man named Barak of the tribe of Naphtali and make known to him the instructions which she had received. She accordingly sent for Barak and directed him to assemble 10,000 men of the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun and make war upon the armies of King Jabin. Right. So in this account, we, we can see that he doesn't know of this. So even though if I if I was reading this, I would think, um, you know, I would take it as, you know, he already knew. But from what Ellen White says, we can take it that she's given to make him know this. So, so this invitation here, um, I'm taking as this invitation in 2017, but um, we, we might be able to place it somewhere else. We could just say simply, uh, this is the time of the end. A message arrives on September 17th, 2017. So getting back to this chart here. Um, we could take the invitation and put the invitation over here, is what I'm trying to say. So why would I do that? And then I'd have to see what, what event this is that would mark June 9th, 2018. Is anybody with me on what I'm doing? I was called away for just a moment, so I'm trying to, to catch up real quick. Okay, so what I did is I took that invitation that Deborah gives to Barack, because that would be basically be different different than what happened in 2017. Right. So in 2017, I'm invited by, not Jeff, I'm invited by Bronwyn. Right. So she wants me to come there because they're not going to have teachers for the, the, the new semester at the beginning of the semester. And so she wants me there for three weeks. I mean, she wanted me to teach, I think, actually for longer, but that's as long as I said I could go. Um, so... I don't remember all the details of that. But anyway, I'm going to be there in 2017. And, and that's at Bronwyn's request. And, um, but when I go there in 2018, that's at Jeff's invitation. And so I would, so either one of those we could take as the invitation. But we could just like look at September 23rd, 2017 as the end of the 200 months right. is okay let me let me throw this at you is yeah. bronwyn's invitation it, could we look at that chiastically where you know, like with barack he wouldn't go forward unless deborah was joined with him so is this with with Bronwyn the opposite of the Barack and Deborah situation? Hmm, well, I don't know if I I don't think I'd look at it chiastically. Okay. Why? Well. Because when I'm looking at this message, so so this has to do with a message. So Barack is a message, right? And I mean, at that time, I'm just I'm just supporting FFA, right? I'm not I'm not trying to do battle with anyone, right? I'm not going to go against 
Parminder uh, in 2017, even though, um, you know, I'm wondering while I'm listening to his presentations exactly where he's going. I don't have any suspicion, right? Um, when he's teaching error and I listen to what his followers are saying that they're getting from it, um, even though I should have known better, because uh, people generally, uh, even if the somebody says they're not teaching something, uh, you can tell that they are teaching it by what their followers believe. So even if their intentions are different, uh, the followers end up believing what they are meant to be to believe. And um, so, so in 2017, when I'm presenting July 18 as a symbol of prediction before midnight, I mean, I'm a peacemaker there. I mean, I'm trying to take uh, Dwayne Dewey's objection. Um, I'm trying to take uh, Tabo's and, and everybody's. I'm trying to, to cooperate with everyone in the movement. I see that the movement, you know, should be united. Uh, that organization has to do with unity, not with structure. Um, so all these things are happening in 2017. But I'm not, I'm not really... Uh, and when I'm invited there, um, and, and even even with August 11th, 2018, I mean, I'm going along with the time setting, even though I'm a pretty reluctant time setter. Um, but just because of what I'm being shown, that I see that these structures reach into our time, the week of Christ reaches into our time, um, and that is giving us information about our time. So to me, that that's a pretty uh, pretty powerful uh, thing that's happening. So I don't know. Well, okay. The reason I'm asking the question, I'm going back into that article from the Signs of the Times. Yeah. Now, as the following paragraphs read, the Lord communicated to Deborah his purpose to destroy the enemies of Israel and bade her send for a man named Barak of the tribe of Naphtali and make known to him the instructions which she had received. She accordingly sent for Barak and directed him to assemble 10,000 men of the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun and make war upon the armies of King Jabin. Yeah, so I read that. Okay. Right, so in, in connection with that, so that's what we were saying is that this invitation, uh, that is, Barak is unaware of this invitation to be given by Deborah. Right. But then Barak... That's why I want to move that to August 11th. Got it. But Barak knew the scattered, disheartened, and unarmed condition of the Hebrews. Doesn't that relate to what you found down at, you know, down in Arkansas, because they were not united. Neither were the children of Israel united at this time. Right. But Barak also knew the strength and skill of their enemies. You went down and you understood that a lot of these especially about July 18th, this symbol was going to be opposed by many, especially on, on the point of time setting. Well, yeah. So in September 23rd, of course, I'm not using it for time setting. I'm just saying right. it's a symbol of the prediction before midnight. But it's going to become, uh, you know, and the, and the thing here, when we look at this diagram, I mean, there are a lot of other dates that could be put in here. Um, you know, for instance, September 11th, um, uh, I think that's when I'm going to start speaking there at the School of the Prophets in 2018. I think it's going to be September 11th. Something happens on September 11th anyway. Um, you know, we also had the October 13th or October 3rd date, 10 days be before October 13th. Um, we also have the date that I came up with July 18th. 2020, which is going to be November 2nd, um, you know, so I don't really have that on this line. Um, 
But that to me would just be an increase of light of the second angel's message. So once we get to October 13th, I mean, I'm going to present at the camp meeting on the 16th um, or the 17th, whatever the day that is that I'm going to be presenting. The first day I present, I can't remember when it is. I'm going to present through that week. Um, you know, there's going to be all kinds of insight that comes regarding July 18th. Um, in connection with the light that came that arrived on October 13th. But I don't have those dates there. I, I'm having these dates here because of how they, they fit in with the overall dates that we've already been given that are placed on the line. Um, so when I look at the first me angel's message, I mean, I guess it is an invitation, right? Obviously there. But it's empowered definitely by Jeff's invitation on August 11th. Okay. Right. Because, and you can't be benefited by the second if you don't accept the first. So I'm accepting that invitation. And, you know, Heidi and I take a step of faith. And, and instead of having a job and having a place to live, all of our stuff, which has been in storage for, uh, you know, a month and a half is going to stay in storage, you know, until we come back in um, February of uh, 2019. So, or whatever it is, January, maybe it's the end of January. So anyway, there's a bunch of stuff that happens in there. It's just, I think that this invitation of Jeff's, I'm going to mark that as the invitation where Deborah instructs Barack. And Barack is saying, I need to go with you, or you need to go with me, right? And that's basically what I said with Jeff. I mean, we needed Jeff's support if we were going to go to Arkansas. So just from that personal impression of how I'm looking at this story, I would take this August 11th invitation of Jeff's um, as that invitation of Deborah to Barack. Because it, he's inviting me, but I have a message that I know is not going to be welcome necessarily. Um, because I, 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 and I still stand as one actually opposed to time setting, even though I have these dates in the future. Because I have ideas about time setting on how it sh should be done. That one is it's internal, not external. And um, and And what Jeff presented regarding time setting was a much more cautious stance than we see as those who are following Parminder are using. Um, you know, an example of that would be uh, the Romanian who just thinks, you know, that we could, we could predict the second coming of Christ if we understood the patterns. And, uh, and when I opposed him, he was pretty upset with me. So, so, you know, so from, from the, my personal perspective, there's this reluctance of Barack. I identify with that in this whole connection of this, this line. It's reluctance all the way along to some degree, but uh, a willingness to go to battle for the Lord, for the truth, even if it eventually opposes Parminder. Well, there again. Just like with Barack, as Mrs. White had written, although he had been designated by the Lord himself as the one chosen to deliver Israel and had received the assurance that God would go with him and subdue their enemies, he was yet timid and distrustful. He accepted the message of Deborah as the word of God, but he had little confidence in Israel and feared that they would not obey his call. He refused to engage in such a doubtful undertaking unless Deborah would accompany him and thus support his efforts by her influence and counsel. Deborah consented but assured him that because of his lack of faith, the victory gain should not bring honor to him for Sisera would be betrayed into the hands of a woman. Now, here, you know, when you went down to Arkansas, mm -hmm. 
you went with a with a a good attitude because you recognized that unity needed to be there and as you just said unity is not going to come from structure mm -hmm. but what we have seen throughout has been further and further winnowing because the wheat and the tares have continued to grow together. Now, just a comment, comment here. So even though I know that unity doesn't come about by structure, I also know that unity doesn't come about by um, opposing things that are done. That is, a person needs to cooperate with any organization if you want to have unity as much as possible. Even if everything that's being done isn't exactly the way that you would do it. Right. Because God is leading a people, not individuals. Right. Right. So you have a movement, you have a church or whatever it is. There are the people who are always opposing everything that happens that they don't agree with. And I'm not a believer in that. I don't believe that brings about unity. Um, and so to have this more a spirit of cooperation that that I would call the father of pleasantness, um, this Lapidoth, right? Or not Lapidoth, the other one. Uh, what's the Abinoam, right? Lapidoth, the other one. Abinoam, right? That's the father of pleasantness. And I, I think that that's the way to approach working with others. You know, we, so so that's the way that I approach this now. So I put here the invitation in. We're gonna we're gonna take this invitation as a longer period of time. Then, so September twenty third, twenty seventeen, we have this invitation, and then I do this presentation. Um, as part of that invitation, we're just gonna look at. A, I've been invited to the School of Prophets. We have this date. That's not the date of the invitation. That's gonna be just shortly before I go back home, but because um, I'm gonna leave two days after that. Um, but that invitation there, that's going to be, um, initiated there in connection with 2017. And then that invitation is really accepted because once I, I have Jeff sort of on my side, he's accepted the message of Samuel Snow's letters. It's taken him nearly a year to do so. I mean, I guess he started presenting Samuel Snow's letters before August of 2018. So let's say nine or 10 months for Samuel Snow's letters to give birth. Um, and then, so Jeff is now promoting Samuel Snow's letters. So that's definitely an, an empowerment of the arrival of that first message. Now, June 9th is a formalization of that, not necessarily intentionally on Jeff's part, but it's a formalization because he's now um, beginning that structure of Samuel Snow's letters. June 9th is going to line up with February 16th, right? Correct. Right. August 11th will line up with April 19th, and October 13th will line up with June 22nd, which is Samuel Snow's second, uh, or not second letter, but his, his third letter. Right. That's going to be the Pentecost letter. And so this is going to um, begin with Pentecost ending and this is going to go to Pentecost. So there's about that structure of the 126 days. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable on how Pentecost is tied together uh, with these dates. So June 9th is Pentecost in 2018. And June 22nd is Pentecost in 1844. And that's October 13th is going to line up with June 22nd. And and then there's 391 and a half days to July 18th, 1844, right? Which is partly how we come up with July 18th. So the 391 and a half days to November 9th, 2019 line up with that. So we, what we need is an, an event or a symbol that's going to tie us to this June 9th. Now, this is going to be the time setting is going to follow that. So Parminder, the next day, 
is going to present time setting. And so the last thing we can do here this morning is just address. Um, so the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. And 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus. So this is going to be um, the torches. She judged Israel at that time. She dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the Mount of Ephraim. And the children came up to her for judgment. So this is uh, Jeff, so to speak, that is his ministry between um, the house of God and the school of the prophets. And that's where Jeff dwells. And definitely people go up to him for judgment. I mean, I did that myself. Okay, so yeah, I need to switch back to the verse so you can look at this. Sorry about that. And um, so she sent in called Barak, the son of Obinuam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded? So somehow um, we have to take in what happened here. Um, I guess what we could say is that what, what Jeff is doing, so the, the question is, where do we put this in this line? So I got to go back to the line again. So when we look at this line, um, what symbol do we have that's going to mark June 9th, 2018? Because, you know, we have the invitation, you know, we kind of are stretching that out over those three way marks. Do we make it as a three-step testing prophetic message? Do we have the invitation? Um, do we have like some kind of response initially? Maybe Deborah's response. She makes an invitation. I don't know. You know how are we going to do that? How are we going to put June 9th here? 2018 as the formalization of the message what what symbol is that this message is about barack being invited uh to do this and we what do we put there okay 69 weeks at the end of the 800 and 43 years. So you're taking June 9th is 69. Okay. So how do we address that as far as the symbols? Okay. Now, somebody's asking me, uh, they want to see the line showing parallels in one graph with another. I'm not sure which they, they probably mean the one that I had done earlier. So. But I'm, I'm understanding what, what Iran is saying here, because I mean, that, that would line up well with the baptism of Christ. Okay. So, so you're going to put the baptism of Christ here as the formalization of the message because yeah. it is the formalization of Christ's message, but how, how do we, what is the symbol then from Judges chapter four? Isn't, well, you have the invitation, you have the consideration of Barak and then the acceptance because he's got to consider whether or not he's going to go forward with this. And he recognizes the messages of God, but he doesn't think that Israel's going to follow him. Okay. So what you're going to have is verse seven. I will draw unto thee the river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude. I will deliver them into thine hand. So she's going to, she's going to give him these instructions, right? You need to take 10,000 men. Um, right. Then she says what she's going to do. I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army. Right. And then Barak says unto her, if thou will go with me, then I'll go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. Now, specifically, when Heidi and I had Jeff's invitation. So he asks us on Sabbath, but he asks us again the next day. Right. 
So this is where we really start to consider it. So we, well, he asked us on, on Sabbath, I believe. And then the next day we kind of go to him with an answer, right? So it's, it's kind of connected there. Um, and we just basically say, well, we need to put out a fleece. So of course we're now mixing uh, stories here, Gideon, but um, because at that time, you know, Heidi had been applying for jobs. She had had, uh, um, I don't know if she had the job interview yet or not. Um, but, you know, we were looking that we were going to get a job. I think she had the job interview already. But, you know, we were waiting for a call about a job. And if she had a job, we weren't going to go. Now, there was no reason. Um, yeah, she had already had the job interview. And, and it was almost a guarantee based on what the person who interviewed her said that she was going to get the job. Um, and of course, then we would have stayed, we wouldn't have, have left, but we didn't get the job. But Jeffy even said the next day, uh, forget about the fleece thing. You know, you just need to go. Right. So, so, so we, we had already, then we decided, yeah, I guess we're going to go. So I think we suggested the fleece. I can't remember if we suggested that on Sabbath. I think it was on Sabbath. We suggested the fleece idea and then. The next day he just said go and and we we agreed with him i think that's how it went i don't remember the details specifically but that seems to make the most sense of how it happened so um but this this thing uh, i will go or i will not go right you can see that this is you know if god's with us we will go if not we're not going to go um so there there there's this um um, but there is also this whole thing she said, I will surely, uh, he says, she said, and she said, I will surely go with the notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. Now, um, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman, and Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So I don't know exactly, you know, how to interpret this at this point, but definitely, um, you know, we, we made the journey down to Arkansas, um, but it wasn't for our honor, right? I mean, that wasn't the, and I don't think it was for our honor because we ended up getting kicked out of the School of the Prophets. So, um, but we weren't looking to to get honor. And um, um, so this being delivered into the hand of a woman, um you know, I don't know what that means, particularly here in the context of, of looking at the message of Cicero and how we would understand what happened. But anyway, that's that's where we're going to have to stop today. I think um, that's the only thing that makes sense uh, for now. To but um, so the question was somebody had asked me about a, a chart. Um a parallel showing the parallels in one graph. And I, I think they're referring to uh, this chart up here, but I don't know. Or do you want me to draw something? That, I don't know. They're asking me something. I'm not sure particularly. But yeah, I mean, we could put all these things up in in a line we could do that to uh, not tomorrow but on sunday draw things up more readily but you can see we almost have this line here uh the only thing we don't have here is the august 11th date and the march 27th date so okay so we're gonna have to close with prayer thanks everyone for your participation. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we've had here this morning. May your Holy Spirit continue to be with each person. May your angels watch over us. We ask for healing in our lives. We need our physical needs met. Help us to be diligent in the work that you've given us to do and to be faithful in the little things. Uh, be with each person. Bless them. And uh, bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.